right, good morning. Good to see you. If you're joining us online, welcome. We are starting a new series, Bring Your Own Bible. Now, we're talking about the Bible because the Bible is the foundation for good wisdom. And so we're going to be talking about that over the next seven weeks. We're going to be talking about how the Bible is inspired, why you can trust it. We're going to talk about how the Bible lays a foundation. And and within the foundation, that's like 66 books. But there's a common theme, and so we're going to look at the big picture. There's also uh, this concept that happens with the Bible called... uh, uh, illumination or inspiration where you're reading it maybe you've read this story who knows how many times but all of a sudden you read it and boom it just you get something new out of it god speaks to your time and we can actually prepare ourselves for that but even more then we're going to talk about interpretation you know there's actually sometimes people say oh that's your interpretation of the bible well you know there's actually only one interpretation that's correct and so we're going to talk about how to get, how to read God's Word so you walk away with the right interpretation. Because with the wrong interpretation, you end up, that's how cults get started. And there's all kinds of weird and wacky ideas where people didn't interpret it the way God had planned it and, and, and expected. So we're going to talk about that. And then also application. How do you integrate it into your life, into work, into uh, your marriage with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, into your finances, how to overcome temptation, how to give good counsel, how to make wise decisions. We're going to talk about that. To live out the word. And so that's why for seven weeks we're going to just Focus in on the Word. Jesus, in his most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, comes to the end of that and that says, You know, an illustration to. storms and he goes when all these things hit the house the house that was built on a firm foundation that one withstood the stand the 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 test of time he goes everyone who hears these words of mine which is the bible and puts them into practice is like a wise person who built his house on the rock on a solid foundation now the sand is like popular culture that changes it's My position should be, let me take surveys, and then I'll base what I think on the surveys. If you do that for your life, you're going to miss it. And so we want you to build it on an unchanging truth. Well, I, for the next seven weeks, we've asked you to bring your paper Bible. That's why earlier we were handing out Bibles. If you don't have You might think, well, Andy, I use my electronic Bible. Well, I'm going to try to convince you that you should add this. I'm not saying replace it, but it adds a tactile element to my learning, which helps me. Uh, I have handwritten notes. I can see them at a glance because I know you can put notes, but there's always like a separate click to go somewhere and then going back. Here I can just glance over and see it, read references and footnotes at a glance. It has a concordance which is real helpful. We'll talk about that. Uh, Less likely to get interrupted with electronic distractions. Well, it's like near impossible, right? If it's not, uh, unless I get it in a different way. Another way to share my faith, when I'm carrying my Bible, it's making a statement. So it's not the only way. It's another way. And visually tells me a story about faith journeys. Not just my story, but, you know, when you're carrying a Bible, your Bible says something about you. It's unique. One of the things, not the only thing, but one of the things is a Bible, as it gets read, gets fatter. I don't know if you knew that. So nice Bibles are, are, are sewn together so they don't fall apart. But they, so a Bible that's real thin and looks new, it's real pretty, means it wasn't read. 
Okay, that's good for the counter somewhere or something. But a Bible that's being read gets fatter and fatter and fatter. So it tells you something about your faith journey. It tells something to you, also other people as well. So paper Bibles. Now, God wired you in such a way where everything you know, everything you learn is through your five senses, right? We know that. Through your hearing, through your smell, through your taste, through your, what you see, through your, what you feel. And God wants you to, that's, a way, that's how we learn things. And so God designed it so that we learn things through our five senses. And that includes our encounter with his word, his enc- with the encounter with how do I build my life on the Bible? And you'll see it follows these, the, the five senses. One is his three ears. You receive you. God speaks to you when you hear it. The Bible talks about in Acts 2 that, uh, that the apostles would teach. And kind of like a sermon we have today with like, you know, YouTube or, you know, or, or a podcast. Hearing it. Is, is a great way to grow in your uh, Bible learning. It says faith comes by hearing the message, which is the Bible, the Word of God, and the message is heard through the Word of Christ. So every time uh, I or another a pastor teaches from here, uh, you're, you're growing in that capacity. Your faith is being built up. So hearing is one of those. Now we're going to, as I said, we're going to look at the five, all five senses. And so we're going to do that by going to James. So the little Bible, if it was handed to you, mostly to the New Testament uh, today and uh, through the series. But I want you to go to James. If somebody looks like they're struggling next to you, you can help them. There's no shame in that, right? We're not, you know, I realize we're, this is not seminary. And some of us have more exposure to the word than others. But James chapter 1, and uh, in my case, I need some glasses. So let's go together. James chapter 1. It's towards the back of the New Testament. Let's see. Okay. So towards the, it's towards the, it's, it's right after Hebrews. Okay, James chapter 1, and we're going to read, we're going to read, see, I'm not, I'm, no crutches today, it's not on your outline, just read James, okay, so read James chapter 1 and verses 19 through 21, so I'll start reading, it says, my dear brothers, take note of this, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, for man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. So here we see uh, that uh, James is pointing out some important things about actually the Bible. So the high, what I want you to do is, now if you were raised in some, you know, we, Many of us grew up with like a family Bible, right? And a family Bible has maybe some genealogy in the front, but you never write in it. It's just like wrong. Uh, Let me tell you that a study Bible, if you need one of those, buy one of those and put it wherever you need to. But you write in. So I put highlight, which means you can circle it. You can highlight it, you can underline it, whatever, but you write in it, okay? This, so I, what I want you to do is, is highlight, accept the word, because that's an important part of what he's saying here. He's saying, here, I want you to accept the word. So right there, it says, accept the word, and in the margin, because here's what I want you to write in the margin, right next to that, if you have a margin, wherever you can, welcome the stranger. You see that word, accept the word, that word actually is decomai, and it's a term of hospitality. It's saying welcome the word like you would if you were going to welcome somebody into your home. You have an attitude of acceptance. You have an attitude of saying, hey, I want this. And then since you're reading God's word, you want this. I want this in my mind. You see, that's part of the reason he says that is 
so many of us have the wrong way of thinking. We're thinking of God's word instead of the biblical way. And so accepting it, in other words, when God says something about sex, you say, okay, God, I want to accept your word about it. I'm not going to just challenge everything. I want to be in a place where, because that's a strange idea. That's not the way I think. It doesn't feel right. Doesn't, it feels awkward. It feels different or sexuality, or finances, or how I treat my body, and the list goes on and on, but you, you posture yourself saying, I want to accept God's word into my life. I'm going to welcome, even though sometimes it feels like strange, it's different. It's a stranger. I want to welcome that into my life. Second is, is I want you to highlight planted. Planted, because that's another part where he says that. He says, accept the word, uh, and then it, and then that which is planted there in verse 21. Except the word planted in you. And so uh, the word is like a seed. It's like a seed. That's what happens is, is scripture is often compared to a seed. And the soil that's being, that the scripture is being planted in, or the soil is our heart. So there's the, Jesus tells about the parable of the sower, of the seed. And he says in some... Uh, in some circumstances, the seed grows up 30, some 60, some 100-fold, 100 times. What's the difference? Well, the seed's the same. It's the soil. And that's true every, every Sunday when I speak. Some people, they grow with the, the seed's the same. Other people, they go, well, that, I didn't get anything out of that. I'm not being fed. Other people, are, they're, they're growing. They're stretching their faith. Why? It's the soil. See, it's how are you preparing your soil? It's heart preparation is very important. You know, it's cell phones, you know, we're all, for me, I, I think there's something wrong with my cell phone because I look up, I'm always losing bars. Just driving home. If I'm talking to somebody and I leave church and I go home, I, at a certain place, I always lose uh, the call, actually. It starts to go bad and then it just, and then it just drops out. I've come to the conclusion that I think my phone doesn't know how to change towers. Right there, this drive a different way home, you know. And, and but getting having reception see is about the phone, not necessarily the signal that's going out. And so we want to prepare ourselves. I want to receive from you, God, and prepare my heart. So if you're going to plant it, the soil is my heart. I want to have good reception. How do we hear from God? How do we have good reception? What can you do? What can we do to have better reception? Well, we're, it's told, we, we're told about that right here in James. And so I want you to highlight these four words. Listen, slow, get rid, humble. So highlight those words. So you're saying, but I'm ruining my Bible. You're, you're actually making your Bible more valuable. Okay, so... So you, those four words, and then what I want you to do is write in the margin, for, just like we did before, hearing God is I need to be quiet. That's the first one. I'm quiet. I'm slowing down. I'm quick to listen, slow to speak. Sharon says, Andy, when you're talking, you're not listening. At least that's what I think she says. <laughs> we, we, there's something that happens when we, when we quiet ourselves, when we listen. Or, you know, studies show your blood pressure goes down when you listen. It actually goes up when you talk. Then to be calm. To be calm. Slow to become angry. Why does he put that in when he's talking about the word? Because our attitude makes a big difference. If you're all upset, you're uptight, you're emotionally stressed out, you're defensive. You know, if you come into church... you're wet and you're late and you run in and you okay God speak to me well it's probably not going to happen because you're not in the right attitude so you it's there's a big part of it where you prepare yourselves the Bible says be still and know that I'm God in Spanish it's cayete y siente right just shut up and sit down <laughs> and then be clean 
Be clean. Where he talks about get rid of all moral filth. He's talking about there's sin in our lives that pile up. And that causes problems. In other words, before you start seeding, you've got to do the soil. And that's, that's, that's on us. That's on us. To get rid of, that word get rid of was used often referring to like buildup of earwax or, or dirty earwax. I know it's kind of gross, but it, he's using that word because he says you can't hear God when it's filled up with stuff. It, get, it plugs it up. So you, you, sometimes you got to clean, clean yourself off. Sometimes I'm working out uh, in the yard and I'm digging holes for like, you know, a bush to be put in. And, my, and, and sometimes I'll forget that my feet are like filthy. And I walk through the house and Sharon goes, oh no, look, you, you can't do that. Look, there's mud everywhere. And then I'm thinking, well, it, you know, is it my job to clean it up? Uh, it is. Just, <laughs> I, I think it, I don't say it. But you, you got to clean that stuff off before you go in. And before we, if we're going to have a meeting with God, there's a cleaning up process. And the way we clean up, by the way, is called confession. God, what I did was wrong. What I'm thinking about when it comes to my friends or my money or my, my language or my parenting or whatever, that's wrong. And so I want to bring that to you because I want to be clean. And then humble. Humbly accept the word. You know, this may be the worst of them all. Because we're just like, well, I'm not going to do it unless you do it my way. I know some people want to be blessed financially. And they say, God, you do it first, and then I'll start giving. Well, that's not the way anywhere in the Scripture. It, it's not just my money. It's with anything. God always says, I want you to go first. And so if you want to be blessed financially, the Bible says you tithe first. You, you prime the pump. You step out in faith. If, if God blesses you and then you give, like, you know, some money after that, there's no faith involved. That, that was a nice gesture. But zero faith goes into that. Faith happens when you trust God before the blessing happens. Now, you, you don't always want to hear that. That's why that's pride. And so it's humbly accept the word. And you go first. And also, listen, we want to be able to Listen to God, and that happens through these, these ways. Number two is not only do we listen to God, eyes. So that's another sense. You cannot grow without reading. So we're going to jump into, we're looking through James 1. You should be there. Keep your finger in James 1. Now, verses 22 through 24. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Well, we don't want to do that. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. The man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. So here he's talking about Here's the things that you need to do to be blessed. He says, we just read that out of the paper Bible. So, uh, Oops. So I was talking to a young girl last week, and uh, she had just been, she had just given her life to Christ the week before. And so she was out in the hallway, and, she, and I said, well, what'd you learn in your class? And I thought, well, it sounds like she was paying attention. Because we were just talking about, you know, don't be like the mirror who just immediately leaves and you forget. So listen, this, so this is my question to her. What would you learn in class today? Here's what she said. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So um, we learned that the Bible is scripture, and then Jesus grew up reading scripture, and then he went to the desert to pray to God for 40 days, and then the devil came and tried tempting him. But then he didn't take any of the temptations, and then when that was done, God's angels guided him through life. That's good, huh? Okay, so as you leave, we have somebody who's going to quiz you. No, I'm just kidding. Well, that'd be good. To, you know, she's paying attention. Part of it is there's an aspect where we need to prepare ourselves. So we, just, so we just looked at that verse in verse 25. I'll read it again, though, since it's there. 
Uh, so we're going to unpack this. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law, that's the Bible, that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. So how are we blessed? Because he's saying, you do these things, you'll be blessed. I want you to be blessed. I want to be blessed in your family, with your work, with your finances, with your health. How does that happen? Well, I want you to highlight the key words. That doesn't just magically happen. You can pray, oh, God bless me. Well, okay, but there's, if you want a prayer answered, it's got to be tied to Scripture. That's why we're talking about that. These are the keys that you want to highlight. Looks intently, continues to do this, not forgetting and doing it. So I'll give you a moment. This is school time here, okay? Looks intently. We're going to unpack all four of those. In fact, what I want you to do, if you have your Bible and your writing, is in the margins, right next to each one of those words, put reading, reviewing, remembering, and responding. Those, those are connected. So we'll look at that, okay? So reading, reviewing, we'll come back to that. Remembering and responding. For a moment, though, I want you to highlight the word mirror. Because he says it's like a mirror. God's word is like a mirror. What does a mirror do? It helps us to evaluate ourselves, right? This morning, probably every one of us got up, looked in the mirror to, re, you know, assess the damage from last night. You know, <laughs> how do I look, you know? Am I presentable? And so we assess ourselves with that. And maybe, maybe we need more makeup, right? Makeup's not a sin. In fact, some people, it might be a sin not to wear makeup. I don't know. <laughs> don't quote me there. You know, Queen Elizabeth I, the one back in Shakespeare's day, she was so self-conscious about aging as she started to lose her beauty towards the end of her life. She had every mirror removed out of Buckingham Palace. She didn't want to be reminded that she's you know, getting older. Now, when you look at a mirror, you can either glance at it or gaze at it, right? A glance is just, right, you just if he'd hold out his comb and look at it and go, ah, oh, a pure perfection. Don't need to even touch anything. That's not what you do with God's Word. We're none of us are pure perfection. And so you look and say, God, how can I change and grow so that you can bless me, that I can be blessable? And so you want to read the Bible. When it comes to reading the Bible, you should do it systematically. In other words, not necessarily from the beginning to the end, but you don't want to just do the dip and skip. You know, like, well, just open it up and read it randomly. There's, there's, you won't grow that way. So you need a Bible reading plan. There's so many good ones out there. If you're not sure what to do, my suggestion is start in the book of Acts. That's in the New Testament. It's a great, great book. That It's a story. It tells about the, the, the early growth of the church. But find something that fits you, but you're doing it on a regular basis. And it keeps it kind of propelling and moving on, and you get the sense of the story Number three is research with my hands and my mouth. Some more of your senses. Again, why we're looking at the paper Bible. So you're reviewing, you're researching. That's really the difference, by the way, between Bible reading and Bible study. Bible reading is good, too. I hope you do read the Bible. You should read the Bible. I need to read the Bible. But studying the Bible is totally different. You go, well, Andy, what's the difference between reading and studying? Well, it's simple. Write, if you write down what you learn and you talk about it, you're now studying the Bible. Those two elements, they're, they're, those two components are, are very important. You write some, you're writing down your thoughts. Now, you can type that, but then you talk about it. That's why small groups are so important. Some of you hear about us talk about small groups. You think, ah, I don't know. Well, Bible study is specifically happens in a small group and grows you because you write it down and you talk about it. And there's something when you're writing stuff down, when you're actually writing, you know, notes down in your Bible, it, it, in your mind, it, there's brain activity that happens that helps you to remember it, remember it. And you're shaping the words. It helps you to grow in that area. So we listen, 
we write, we read, we talk, all those things are part of what the Bible talks about, searching the Scriptures. You search the Scriptures because you believe they give you eternal life, and Scriptures pointed to me, Jesus says. In fact, you can see Jesus all through the Old Testament. All through the Old Testament. And he says, but what are they doing? They're searching. He says, when you search, you're, you're, you're doing this research. Acts 17 talks about something similar. Uh, there was a little city called Berea in Greece. And they were, Paul had come to share the, 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 the gospel. And they were searching the scriptures there. I think we have to go to the paper Bible on this one. Okay, here we go. Keep your finger in it. And we're going to, where you're at, because we're going to come back to James and go to Acts 17. I just talked to you about reading that, so that now you have a chance to find it. Acts, it's right after the Gospels. Last Gospel is John, Acts 17, 11. Help your neighbor, please. Okay, 17, 11. I'll give you a moment. All right, here we go. So I'm, of course, reading the NIV. I already said that earlier. Uh, it says, now the Bereans were of no, more noble character than the Thessalonians. That's, that's another Greek city about two days walk away. Every day to see if what Paul said was true. So what are they doing? They're getting together after Paul teaches in their small group and they're talking about it. They're writing down questions. Hey, let's ask Paul this. Let's ask Paul that tomorrow. They're doing Bible study. So you highlight, examine the scriptures or whatever translation you have where it talks about searching, not just reading. They're doing research. They're having discussions. The fourth way to build my life on the Bible is review and remember with my mind. Review and remember with... In other words, not forgetting. I'm remembering. Uh, so now we're going to go back to James 125 again. So I told you to put your finger in it. I did not. Here we go. James 125. Reading that again. It says, But the man who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and continues to do this not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. And so he's talking about remembering it, reviewing it. What's, you know, there's a word for that, and that's meditation, where you think about it. And you, you're trying to get it from just, you know, doing your Bible reading, your Bible study, how do I get it inside me? So it's part of what I do. Now, certainly Bible, just memorizing verses is helpful. But there's also pondering it, meditating on it. Do not let this book of the law, which is the Bible, depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Only verse in the Bible that talks about how to be prosperous and successful, he says, by meditating on, the, on, on God's word. You're, you're, you're remembering it. It's it's, you're receiving it with your ears, you're reading it with your eyes, you're researching it with your hands, and when you talk about it, with your mouth, but then you review it and you remember it in your mind. It's part of the way you're kind of getting it into your, that, that soil of your heart. And then responding with my actions. I mean, that's important. If you don't do anything about it, you become like that mirror, the person who forgets what they look like. You go, God, I want to make things different in my Bible. So James 1, 22. says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. In other words, if you don't do it, you're deceiving yourself. I'm, if I don't do it, I'm deceiving myself. If I just if I know and talk about what it means to be a good parent, but I don't do it, that's deception. If I know and talk about what it is to do with your finances, but I don't do it, I'm deceived. That's what he's saying. So he says, turn it into actions. What a great example of that. Yesterday, serve day. Many of you showed up or you went out to your serve, and we served all over the community. Here's a quick highlight 
of what we did in serve day, trying to saying, hey, we're going to put into practice by loving people in practical ways. Watch this. verse Matthew 7 that's in the gospel that's one of the gospels there towards the beginning of the New Testament actually it is the beginning it is the new the beginning right Matthew 7 24 last one going back to school well I mentioned this right early about the story that Jesus tells Matthew 7, 24. He says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. Beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. That's God's word, building your life on what God says. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who puts his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against it, that house, and it fell with a great crash. Your Bible highlight two words, rock and sand. Sand is... The, whatever the prevailing polls say, the popular culture, the rock is God's word. You get filled with anxiety and stress and worry. That's always a litmus test when you have storms come because if you're built on the rock, it's going to change your perspective. So if you have your Bible and you hold it like, you know, you have five fingers. We talked about five things, the five senses. If you just hear it, you just come on Sundays, you know, you can hold it, but the devil can take it away pretty easy. But if you hold it, but if you listen and you on Sundays and you also read it, that's a little better grip, but it's still not very strong. But if you come on Sundays, you listen, you read it, you also study it, now you're getting a better grip. It's not as easy, but it's still, it's not as strong as it could be. You start remembering it. You go, I want to start memorizing, pondering it, meditating on it. And then when you do it, nobody's getting that. Good luck trying to get that out of my grip. Let's hold God's word close to us over these next seven weeks and say, God, I want to grow in that area. I want to be blessable. Let's bow our heads and pray. Well, my goal that you'll love the word, you'll learn the word, you'll live the word. That you'll build your house on the rock and not on sand. I think all of us here have had some sand 
we've built ourselves. This, it's so convincing. The culture does such a good job to say, this is how you get blessed. But God says, no, it's this way. So today, I'm going to encourage you to look in the mirror to evaluate, evaluate yourself. Say, God, I'm not just going to glance at it. I'm going to gaze because I want to be blessable. I want my soil to be a place where lots of of seed can take root and and prosper well. Would you say, God, help me to listen to your word, to hear it. Help me to read your word. Would you say, God, help me to grow in the habit of studying your word and remembering it, pondering it to talk it out in a small group and write it down what I what I learned and you say God help me to do what it says God wants to help you to do that really what we're talking about is this, it's not even an issue of having enough time this is a spiritual issue it's putting God first place in your life so I want to invite you to do that if if you're off kilter today God's not center in your life and you want to place him back or maybe you've never done it where you say, God, I want you first place in my life. I want to learn to trust you. Whatever trust issues I have, I give you permission to start dealing with that stuff because I want to follow you. If that's your prayer and you say, that's, that's, what I want to, that's what I want for myself. I want that relationship with God. Then I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now with every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm gonna, if you're saying, A.D., I, I want to come back and put Christ center in my life. I want God first place in my life. If that's you, then I want you to just boldly let me know right where you're at. Just put your hand up and say, I want to pray with you. That's my prayer. Okay? Bless you. Yep. Yep. Several of you. Anybody? A few more. This is, you know you need to put God center in your life again. Yep. I see you in the back. Okay. Yep. I see you. Okay. Put your hand down. Would you pray this? Say, today is my day, God. Today is my day. I, pro- I place you first in my life. I can't do it on my own. I need your help. But I place you first in my life. I invite your Holy Spirit to come, change my heart, change my mind about things. I want to build my life on the rock. Your word promises that are in there. Would you say, God, help me to be a blessable person, somebody where your, the seeds of your word can grow in my heart and produce fruit. In Jesus' name. You know, prayed that prayer and said yes to God. That's always a great prayer. Whenever God's reaching out to you, you say yes.